in Prince George. It's the traditional territory of the Kletley Tanay. And we give thanks for their stewardship of all of creation for over 9,000 years and express a desire to have a different kind of relationship with all of Canada's indigenous Inuit and Métis peoples. We're going to spend a very brief time talking about our life and ministry together. So here's the gist of it. Make sure you check out our socials and our website so you can find out uh, all the information about what's coming up. This evening at 7.30, we've got our queer worship service on uh, the 21st. Uh, On-site and online, we have our uh, blue Christmas service. On the 24th at 4, we have our kids' carols and chaos uh, service. Uh, And at 8 o'clock, we have candlelight and communion. Those are both uh, on-site along with the one from the 21st. Uh, If you're joining with us on site, you do have to provide proof of full vaccination, and you must remain masked the whole time uh, that you're present. Proof of vaccination is for those 11 years and older. Masking is for all of those five and older. On December the 25th, we have a special Christmas Day service that'll be online only at 7 p.m. And on uh, December the 26th, our Boxing Day service will be again at 10 a.m., our regular or usual uh, time, but it will be online only. Starting just January the 2nd, we're back to our regular rotation of things. And at least for now, you'll be able to join us in person if you can provide proof of full vaccination. Christmas office hours are coming up. There's more news about that on the website. You can also pick up your church envelopes. Uh, We did send out a little bit of a notice. We had a couple of surprise expenses this year that we didn't budget for. Uh, So if you can help with those, that would be greatly uh, appreciated. Coffee and Friends, uh, the link should have gone out for that at about 9.30 this morning, so if you want to join us for a little bit of time after worship as soon as we get set up, we do have to do a recording with the choir, but once that's done, uh, then we'll pop online so we can connect with one another. The rest of the announcements we're going to leave for you to follow up with and find out about. Uh, We also sent them out by our email list, so you should have received those uh, yesterday as well. We'll send out a special Christmas uh, midweek notice uh, this week to make sure you have all those times and things. If you want to make sure that there will be a chair here for you for the Christmas Eve services, we do encourage you to register online. It's the easiest way to make sure there is a chair. Those will be reserved. Uh, You can still show up and have a seat, but uh, if we run out, we run out because we're only allowed to have 90 people according to public health orders, at least as they stand as of today. If you've been paying attention to the news, you know that as you move from east to west, uh, those public health orders are changing a lot, very uh, rapidly as the Omicron variant seems to take hold in Canada. Those are all the pieces of our life and ministry that we want to share with one another this morning. Again, please check out our website and our social platforms uh, to find out more information. Pay attention to your email and your inbox. Let's take a deep breath. And all the way out. And let's take a moment and experience this Advent reflection as we prepare to enter into worship. Sometimes knowing what needs to be done and doing it are easy. Sometimes, like can happen in pregnancy, the wisdom is all in the body as long as everything goes smoothly and everyone's healthy. Other times, meaning and purpose are more elusive, like what are we supposed to do now? We compare our skills and gifts to the needs of the world and the alignment doesn't seem to be there. So we discern, we contemplate, perhaps in silence, perhaps in conversation with other people. Maybe we watch videos and we rest. And as we rest, we also prepare. Prepare to jump in and do that which the Spirit is asking us to do, to be how the Spirit is asking us to be to contribute to something bigger than ourselves, something so great 
as to be described as the kingdom of God, where all are known and beloved, just as we are, where there is fairness for all people. God, the Mighty One, does great things in us. Let's be part of what God is doing now. The first piece we're going to sing for this morning is called Gabriel's Message. The tune might be familiar to you from other pieces. I'm going to ask Vic to play it through all the way once first, and then we'll join together in singing. Please join me in the gathering prayer. Please join in with the bold print. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards all people. By God's grace and Mary's trust comes the light of ages and the hope of nations. Jesus Emmanuel, God with us, with silence and song and stories of faith. We make room in our lives for God's limitless love. Holy One, open to us the door of the stable that we might look in. Guide us to the stables of our world and to renew us your vision for all creation. As we get ready for the candles of Advent, we're going to sing through our candle song for this Advent twice, and then uh, Vicki's going to lead us through the liturgy for the candles, and we're going to sing it a third time.
We have lit the candles of hope, peace, and love, and joy. This week, we light the candle of love. Love isn't about warm and fuzzy feelings. It's something bigger. Love is how we treat one another. As we trust that Advent ends in a new creation, as we do what is right to bring peace, as we respond with joy to the call of Advent, we are also called to love one another. We are called to participate in bringing down the powerful and feeding the hungry, scattering the proud and lifting up the lowly. We are called not only to receive love, but to offer it. As we light the fourth candle of Advent, may we learn to love. Affirming God's love, please join me in the bold print. With the stars in the night sky that we know are there, yet we can never count, God's love for us is limitless. In our season of preparing and waiting, God's grace is already moving us towards a relationship that we can transform us. Know that as we wait, look, and see, and act that God always loves you. The size or value of your present isn't God's concern. You are, and you are, enough. From this place of love, we move, move inward, inward so that we can move outward, outward trusting, trusting that, that in the midst of transformation, transformation in the, the midst of times we do not love ourselves nor feel loved, loved by others, God's love is enough. enough. We're going to take a moment to share the peace of Christ with one another on this fourth Sunday of Advent. If you're physically present on site with us, then we're going to invite you to stand up and kind of look and make eye contact with one another. Put your hand over your heart and bow and say, the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. If you're on our socials, we invite you to use the comment or chat boxes to do that using the same exact words. Let's greet one another with the peace of Christ. I invite you to join with us in experiencing the first of our two 
pieces of Scripture for this morning. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord.
My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. Let's gather together in prayer. Let's pray. Be near us, O oh God, as we ponder these ancient words handed down throughout the generations. May we find in them a fresh expression of your love for each and every one of us. A love that comforts us when we need it. Challenges us when we need that. Together, May the people and the leadership examples of Elizabeth and Mary challenge us to say yes to being part of something bigger that just so happens to be shown to us in something smaller. Bless, O oh God, the words of my mouth, the hearts and minds and spirits of those who hear them. It will help turn them into action. Amen. A very familiar piece of scripture this morning from the Gospel of Luke. The story of, of Mary going off to visit her cousin Elizabeth and what happens with Elizabeth on the one hand and then Mary's response, more traditionally known as the Magnificat, held on the other. The two seeming to be in tension with one another and yet also complementary of one another. The two seeming to be about the birth story of Jesus, and indeed they are, but they are also about setting up the whole rest of the Gospel of Luke and everything that will happen in Jesus' ministry and everything that will happen after it. It's a challenge, though, for many of us to hear these words and, and understand the impact that they would have had when the original hearers of them experienced them. Partly because things like travel, COVID aside, are usually such thing that we take for granted. If we want to go see our cousin, we just jump in the car and off we go. We go visit them or we take a plane ride or it really doesn't matter if it's just down the road in Quinell or if it's down to Vancouver or if it's somewhere in Alberta or further afield. We just do it and we take it for granted. It doesn't matter the time of day or the time of year or really what's going on with us. To think of a pregnant person traveling some distance to go and visit family seems natural for us. And yet in the ancient world, that was the furthest thing from the truth. Travel alone was a dicey idea on the best of occasions, even with Rome building roads and protecting travel, it still wasn't something you did if you didn't have to do it. The notion of a, let's just go for a drive just doesn't apply. It especially doesn't apply for someone who's pregnant, who's expecting. doesn't matter if it's first, second, or third trimester. It's not something that you would have done lightly. And yet Mary seems to just get it in her mind that she's just going to go visit her cousin Elizabeth. And off she goes. In Luke's Gospel, there's no reference of who goes with her. No reference of how many people travel with her, if it was her family that went with her. 
Certainly, we're led to believe it wasn't Joseph. And Luke almost presents it as if she does it all on her own. For some reason, she has to go see Elizabeth. And when she does that, when she gets there and it's safe and sound, we're told that the most miraculous thing happens. The baby that Elizabeth is carrying, Elizabeth who herself should not be pregnant in the first place, partly because everybody understood she was late into her menopausal years. The child she's carrying leaps for joy when Mary comes close. That first experience of being closer in proximity to Jesus causes John the Baptist, the one who Elizabeth is carrying, to respond. It's some kind of interuterine communication between two fetuses. Just think about that for a moment. That's pretty crazy when you think about it. What's even crazier is that Luke talks about it in Scripture. Anything at all to do with reproduction, especially women's bodies, was not something you talked about in public. It was reserved for, for groups of women in the back corner of the house where where nobody might overhear it or happen to stumble into the conversation, because who knows what might happen if you heard about wounds. Everything just might change. Right? And yet here Luke is talking about one fetus jumping for joy in one womb while another fetus is kind of having a nap, apparently, in another womb. And all of a sudden, issues of Procreation are right there in front of us. Along with a reference to menopause. I mean, how often does that happen in Scripture? And it reminds me of, of the challenge that I get sometimes of folks that tell me that, that certain things aren't supposed to be talked about in church. I go, well, if Luke could break all those social conventions, like a couple thousand years ago. Maybe it's time that we do too. Maybe it's time that we take a page out of the Gospels and recognize that everything we experience in life is part of our experience of worship. I'm not saying we don't need to be careful about how we talk about certain things and the impact that those things have on people. But if we really believe that we bring our whole selves and our whole lives into worship, then surely we need to be able to talk about those things in worship. And that's just the tip of, of the iceberg for this very, very familiar reading as we get closer to, to Christmas. Far from this kind of merry, meek, and mild who kind of shows up, you know, to talk to the elder Elizabeth, there's a whole bunch of things going on in this scripture reading. One of them is even the, the, how you navigate one generation handing off to the next generation. Elizabeth represents one, Mary represents another. Elizabeth rooted in her tradition, it has served her well. She knows it well. She knows the songs well. Mary shows up and talks about something completely different. Mary's like, hey, I came across this new song. It sounds fabulous. We should sing it. Elizabeth going, mm, I'm not so sure. That doesn't sound like the first Noel to me. Mary's saying it's okay you'll recognize the sentiment. You'll understand the connection. Somehow in Luke's Gospel, we have two incredible women named, which is rare in and of itself. We get to kind of eavesdrop on an intimate, personal conversation 
which is even more odd. And then we get to see what leadership really looks like. What, what fierce leadership looks like from Mary. We can actually claim that, that Mary was the first disciple of Jesus. She recognizes and understands who Jesus is, has some sense of what Jesus is going to do, and she's the first one that bears witness to him. And that's in the Magnificat. And far from here comes the Messiah and it's going to be warm and fuzzy and, and everybody who's upset will be joyful and everyone who's joyful will just be more joyful and things will all be right with the world. What Mary offers is nothing short of treason in the Roman Empire. Nothing short of revolutionary. And nothing short of of life-threatening danger. To utter the words that she utters at that moment in human history was punishable by incarceration, at least, by death at worst. And yet, that's Mary's song. And I sometimes wonder if the words that, that she says and the way that she says is don't become so familiar to us when you have almost 2,000 years of displacement that we forget how challenging these words really are. And instead, we just wrap them up in the bow and, and wrapping paper of Christmas and, and just smile at them. But they are life-changing words. The world that she talks about is is so different than the world that she lives in, so different than the world Elizabeth lived in. It really challenges the powerful, but it also gives hope to those on the periphery. Kairos Canada took some time to, to take the Magnificat and, and the Mary Did You Know song kind of rewrite the lyrics to that well-known Christmas tune. I invite us to take a listen to a different version of Mary, Did You Know? Mary, 
never did you know you're a selling crown. Get help with new creation. Did you know that we need your faith? The confidence of you. Be the God that we believe in. Be so true. Far from the mansplained version that is quite common, here's one that challenges us to, to see if we understand exactly the role that Mary has. Here's a, here's a person who says yes when God says, come and join me. Here's a person that says yes when God says, come and do Here's a person that says, yes, even when what's being proposed seems like it's the craziest idea ever. Here's the person who says yes to a radically different version of the world where it isn't about the rich and the powerful. It isn't about the folks with titles. It isn't about the folks that can afford a brief space flight right on the edge of the atmosphere. It's about the person sitting on the street corner savoring their Christmas shoebox. Because that might be the only expression of love and care and value that they might receive this Advent and Christmas season. Far from being just some teenage, pregnant, peasant girl, just before Christmas, Luke gives us a vision and a version of a powerful, self-assured female leader. And it's her words that set up the whole rest of the gospel. It's not someone else, it's not some male guy, it's not some you know, educated, astute, religious person. It's Mary. Mary understands it better than anybody else. And in the midst of it all, she says, yes. That's the Mary I hear when we share this story every year. It ain't Mary meek and wild. I think the tradition has done Mary a huge disservice. What I hear instead is Mary fierce and loud. Mary saying yes. Yes to whatever it is God's got in mind. Whatever it is God's got planned. Whatever God's going to do next. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. May we have the same courage that Mary does. And may we draw the same comfort that Mary does. When the world seems crazy and the problems seem huge and what's going on in our lives starts to feel like it's going to overwhelm us, may we have the comfort that Mary experienced. in the knowledge that she is not alone. Thanks be to God.
Paul now. We're going to join together in singing a more familiar piece from Voices United, number 38, Angels We Have Heard on High. As we gather together for prayer, we hold many people and places and events in our hearts and on our minds. In particular, we name Tracy F., Pearl, and Kevin, Laura B., Aaron, Wanda, Joe M., Larry T., Gary G., Jackie H., Donna, Claudia N., R.P., Jim and Sylvia, Catherine, Dina, Cindy, we pray for those who continue to feel the effects of the floods and tornadoes and other natural events that have impacted so many across the world. And we pray for all our communities as we wrestle with the implications of an emerging fourth, fifth, whatever number wave and a new variant seems to throw our world into chaos. And we pray for all those families who are trying to make it from point A to point B, for those who are gathering and have gathered and will gather to celebrate one another and 
the power of the Christmas story in their lives. Let us continue our attitude of prayer. God of hope, hear us as we pray for your world and your people, for those who will spend these days alone, for those who will not have enough for a feast, for those whose tables will have an empty place this year. Lift our hearts in anticipation of your vision. Shine a light in the shadow of fear. Sing a song of rejoicing in the lonely heart. God of peace, on this Christmas day we pray for the people of Bethlehem, of Israel and Palestine, for the refugees who have nowhere to lay their heads, for those who have found themselves in strange lands. Watch over and protect them, God of the morning star. Guide all people in the ways of mercy. God of joy, open our hearts that we might receive you and hear your voice. Open us to the possibility of true change in us and in others. Remind us of your promise made again to each generation of your forgiving and transforming love. May things on earth be as they are in heaven. God of love, heal the wounded heart, humble the proud, and lift up the downtrodden. Reconcile us to one another in our homes, our families, and our communities. Remind us this Christmas season of your love for us, revealed in the child of Bethlehem, and revealed again in our hearts. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who comes using the words that have been handed down to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We give thanks for all of the different ways that you support our ministry here at Trinity United Church, whether it's with your time, your, your talent, your creativity, your passion, and your financial resources. Not only do you support us, but you also support the United Church of Canada through the Mission and Service Fund. And We invite you to take a, a minute for mission and watch a video about some of the things that the Mission and Service Fund does across Canada and around the world. The work of Mary's song, her remix of Hannah's song, still as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago. 
And so we join together in this prayer for all of the gifts that have been offered and all of the gifts that will. To the stable, each brought what he could and each gave what she had. The animals, their warmth. The shepherds, their awe. The magi, their gifts. To God's world and God's people, we offer our gifts with the same love that God shares freely with us. Amen. Let's join together in singing another tune together. This one is from Voices United number 44. It came upon the midnight clear. beyond ourselves to find strength through vulnerability, contentment in our sharing, healing in relationship. As we go, let us go singing of God's love and the blessing of our lives together. So go, go be the church, go be Trinity United. And as we go forth into the world, may we do so with the blessing of our co-creative God, the love of God shown to us in the birth of Jesus and the resurrection of Christ, and through the grace of the Spirit, to embrace such a fierce and powerful model of leadership as were shown in Mary, to risk saying yes for change in ourselves and in the world, trusting that as we say yes, we are held in the palms of loving and caring hands. Amen.
Friends, thanks again for joining with us here for the fourth Sunday of Advent at Trinity United Church in Prince George, British Columbia. Wherever it is that today finds you, we hope it's a place where you can be safe, be calm, and be community. Let's continue to invest in the common good and the common health of one another. Make sure we're wearing our masks, sanitizing our hands, following the public health orders and doing everything we can to make sure that Christmas is as comfortable for as many of us as possible. Don't forget about our queer Christmas service this evening, our blue Christmas service, where we acknowledge all of the challenges that we've faced in the last year or years and ground them in hope. That happens on Tuesday the 21st at 7 p.m. And then Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Most importantly, take some time to, to listen and hear here with fresh ears, maybe here for the very first time. This crazy thing that God is doing in the birth story of Jesus and how it's really for everyday people just like you and me. So until we gather together for worship again, have a great week. We'll see you soon.